let's get on to the main event, and that is the combined eleven. Uh, before we go into score predictions, so I'm just gonna quickly um, just share screen. Let's have a look where are we. Here we go. Um, so, just check if everyone's seeing, so everyone can see that. Um, so, first, I guess first things first, deciding on how we play. So, because Leicester, you said you said that we set up in a, in a free, almost three five two, and yeah. United was set up in a four two three one. So, how are we going to combine this formation? Would you say? And in I'd between... say go four two three one because we typically play four two three one. It's okay. just because of the injuries we've got at the moment, but we're we've adjusted to a three at the back. Okay. Right. I uh, will. So so four four two. Four, two, three, one. Okay, right. So let's begin. Um, and obviously get involved in the comments as well. Who do you have in this combined 11? Um, so in goal, Casper Michael. And, oh, and the only, only rules obviously with this is that it's um, current form and they have to be fit to play the game. That's basically the, the current rules, really. Um, okay. So uh, from the United side, David De Gea and Henderson are fit to play. So you could pick either one. And obviously, you've got Casper Smeichel. Um, I, I, I'm going I'm to start by annoying all of your subscribers to start with. Okay. I'm going to go Casper Smeichel because I think he's been one of the most underrated keepers this season. Some okay. of the saves he's been pulling off is ridiculous. And it's okay. that whole thing. If, if he was at a bigger club, he would probably be being touted as one of the players of the season with some of the saves that he's making. It's difficult, really. It's difficult because I don't... I think because... I don't think De Gea or Henderson have had bad seasons. But I think unlike previous seasons, you 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 see it's been shared, you know. So Henderson effectively is number two, but he's effectively played in pretty much all the FA Cup games, all Europa League, one or two Champions League games, and he and he's obviously taken off of, for over oh, David De Gea following um, his um, paternity. Um, so it's like we haven't. So I'm almost going to say I agree with you giving Casper Spinkel simply because he's been he's been there all the time, and I feel that with De Gea and Henderson, even though I think that I would still rank them individually, arguably is better than Casper. I think because the number one, it's almost like a fight for I think the number one club United right now, um, and and I don't know who's going to win. Um, so yeah, and it's I mean Kobe even says here, and, and I, let's do Kobe. Michael is criminally un, underrated. He's really good at commanding his box as well. So I think that's the tiebreaker, man. I think we're going to put. Um, Kasper Schmeichel as our number one keeper, so I, I will I definitely concede that. Uh, With Schmeichel as well, I almost feel he's got an impossible task of living up to his dad's reputation because, like, you watch a game on Sky with uh, a last game on Sky, and like Schmeichel can't do anything without being compared to Peter, but who's mm. probably one of the best goalkeepers of the Premier League era. So yeah. I feel like he's all, he's like before even he's played a game, he's up against it. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. I mean, although to be fair to him, he's won a Premier League title, um, which um, was it was this just like I mean <laughs> the, the joke they always ban to Liverpool fans with that like you know his dad and his son won a Premier League title, you know, so before you know Liverpool FC did, you know, so that always I always hold that close to my heart because you know thirty plus years and in that period, you know, Michael and it's 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 crazy. Um, Centre backs here. Um, now, I would obviously I would put Bay, but I don't think Bay is fit, so I can't put him. Which means that <sighs> I mean, who? <sighs> My two would be Evans and Maguire. If I was going to be honest, okay. Right. I know Maguire gets a lot of stick, and I give him my fair share of it. I can't lie. Yeah. But yeah, and that because he is an eighty million pound defender, but mm. the price tag isn't his fault, kind of thing. No. And like, I know he hasn't lived. I know he hasn't lived up to that eighty million pound price tag, but he's still a decent centre back. Uh, do I? 
I, I think the thing with a Maguire Evans thing is that I just don't know where the pace is in that. I mean, Lindelof doesn't have pace either. Uh, do I? Uh... That's true. I remember Maguire and Evans mm-hmm. playing together against Bournemouth and Ryan Fraser making himself look like look like prime Pele when. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but... Lindelof does. I mean, Mo, Mo says Mo says Lindelof and Maguire, um, and Kobe says Fafana and Maguire. See, Fafana. I think, I see. Go on. Yeah, I think Fafana. Give it if we do this debate next year, and Fafana keeps developing the way he is, I would 100% agree. My mm. only thing with Fafana is he's only had, what, seven months in England so far? He's been brilliant, but I think it's a bit too quick to sort of put him past someone like Johnny Evans, who's been performing okay. at the top level for, what, four or five years since okay. since he's... I think since he left United, I think he's improved massively, where he's sort okay. of been able to go away from the limelight and sort of develop his game slightly. Or West Brom mm. come to Leicester, and I think we've seen really the best Johnny Evans of areas. Okay, um, so yeah, Evans and Maguire. Then I can't. I'm trying to find arguments. I really, really am. But I think the goalkeeping and the centre back, centre backs. Bay, if Bay was there, I'd, I'd, I'd defend Bay to the roof. You know. So I, I think that the thing about Eric Bay is that if he was fit. All year round, he'd be the. I would argue he'd be the best centre back in the league if he was fit the whole year round, you know. But he's he's just not, um, and it's just it's it's not helpful. Um, but I put yeah, let's put Evans and Maguire in. It's mad that neither of us have even mentioned Siunchu, who was in the team of the year last year. It just mm. sort of shows, but he's a good player, but. I don't know. It's it's weird, but I rate Evans and Fafana better than him, and he, I still think he's a brilliant centre back, which just shows sort of how much our depth, our squad depth, is slowly improving. The fact that we've got three very decent centre backs. Johnny Evans probably will need to be replaced over the next year or so, but having three mm-hmm. centre backs at the moment, just a brilliant option. And I think it echoes what we talked about about where Leicester City are now. I think that because um, you know you do have more squad depth than you had beforehand, I think that that makes a huge difference when it comes to competing for top four, certifying those things uh, c- compared to other teams. Um, left back, Luke. I'm, I'm no, no arguments, Luke Shaw. No arguments, Luke Shaw. I'm sorry, Anne. I'm sorry, Luke Shaw. Nothing else. Yeah, you, only just because. I would have, you would have maybe been able to have a conversation about it if James Justin hadn't got injured because he was having a brilliant season. Mm. But Luke Shaw has been absolutely terrific this season, and I, and I completely agree he gets in this. Uh, okay, right back. Um, I would he's... have said Ricardo Pereira, but he's injured. So he's injured. help yourself because we've got Mark Albright and playing there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know, I know. I was like, Wamba Saka hasn't had his best season, but he still would probably go ahead of, of Mark Albrighton. Um, and, and we don't that's really have. Against, yeah, that's nothing against Mark Albright, and I really mm-hmm. like him as a player. Obviously, brilliant player to be able to fit into multiple positions, hard worker, brilliant to bring off the bench and stuff. But Wamba Saka is just sort of different gravy. Stanya. Castagne is good left back. He's been solid for us, but Shaw has been Shaw has been brilliant. Yeah. And yeah, most of Justin is unbelievable. I agree. I think I think I, I think that when I saw him, I was like, I don't. It, this guy's is playing a is he playing a move away from Leicester City type of sort of thing? Um, but um, uh, but obviously, as you said, he's got injured, which is which is unfortunate. Um, mm. So our two midfielders, I mean, I think I already know. I mean, if I say these two names, let me know whether you think that this works. In DD Pogba. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, yeah. I love Tielemans, but Pogba, he's right up there with like, the very best mm. midfielders in world football. I know you haven't seen that a huge amount at United, but on his day, he's one of the absolute, like, elite elite midfielders in world football so yeah I've got no arguments about that I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible yeah. 
I mean, I mean, I'm saying it, and in my mind, I'm like, I just wish that Ndidi was at Manchester United. Like, it's like, it's the one player, Leicester City, that like I really, really, really want uh, because he just, he, you know, I mean, I'm, I don't think he's, he had, to, I don't think this has been his best season. I actually think that he actually was better in, in, the, in the season beforehand, whom I saw, but he's I'd, still. I personally disagree with that. I would think oh, okay. this season he's come on massively. And like his ball winning abilities always been top draw, but it's more his side on the ball this year that's developed. The sort okay. of progressing the balls, playing those balls sort of through the lines and stuff. He's still not got that like top, top level sort of on the ball ability, but it's definitely improving and it's definitely mm. a lot better than it was. And people mm. forget as well about him. He's what, only still 22, 23? Yeah, so, this is the thing. Yeah, yeah. So. He's got a lot of, and you know, and I, and I, I wouldn't be, you know, if if Leicester City were mid table, then I wouldn't be surprised if other big clubs started sniffing around, you know. But obviously, because Leicester City are where they are, and obviously can command, you know, very very high um, transfer fees, you know, I think he's probably going to be at Leicester City for quite some time, and I think he'll be certainly be crucial for for what what happens next season. Um, so yeah, I think we agree on Ndidi and Pogba. Um, now go now goes the front three. Um, so let's try. Let's okay. Let's start right wing, right wing, right wing, right wing. Uh, I'll say Rashford. Right wing. Oh, Rashford's not available, is he? Yeah, Rashford is probably yeah. So I think uh, you're gonna you're probably I'm no. I'm not including Rashford or Cavani. Um, or Martial, because I think that, or unless the comments can correct me, I think all three of those players look like they're carrying knocks or injured. Um, so, I'll, and obviously, Bay, so I'm removing all those four. So, we're not left okay. with a lot. Right. I'm going to go Mark Albrighton, right wing, Mark Albrighton. <laughs> what else can we say? What else can we say? I can't say Harvey Barnes, can't say Ricardo Pereira. Because <laughs> how can we have Mark Albright in a combined eleven of United and Leicester? Like that, that that cannot be allowed. That I'm, I'm not disrespecting Mark. He's a, he's a he's a Premier League. He's won a Premier League medal, you know. But I mean, who, who he, else are we going to go? Actually, I, I know mean, who we can go with. Iosi Perez. He can play on the right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, Jamie Vardy's fit, right? He's fit. Yeah. So you could so okay so we yeah, have so in the United options you could play um, actually Kobe agrees I guess the United ones you have Greenwood and you have um, Dan James I'm sorry I, if you you're not putting Dan James ahead of Mark Albrighton show the man <laughs> some respect <laughs> <laughs> he is to be fair you're right he is a Premier League winner. Mark Albright is mm. a Premier League winner. And to be fair, the comments agree. Kobe says, and these United fans say, why not Iosi Perez and Mo Iosi? So, yep, yeah, okay. I think we can I think we can put um OZ on the right. So far, what was it? We've got one, two, one, two, three, four uh Leicester players and then one, two, three, four United players. Okay. Uh, the interesting thing about Perez on right is like a lot of well, I'd say about 50-50 with Leicester fans would rather see Albrighton play on the right than Perez because mm. with Albrighton at least you get he's got probably one of the best deliveries in the box in terms Fine. of our team and then Fine. brilliant work with, but he's just not the flashy goal scoring sort of winner and he's not a top name but he's just sort of you know like that solid Mr. Reliable player that you've got James Monotype yeah, exactly, exactly. Like he's not mm. gonna get any headlines, but he's a good player to have around the squad. Fine. Right. I'm gonna make a case that Bruno is a number ten. Is there any yeah, yeah. any any debate? I can't really argue with that. I'd I could put a case up if Madison was available, but mm. I think well, our number ten's on the wing, so yeah, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Bruno, Bruno, Bruno. Bruno, right. Um, so our left winger, well, like I said, we don't have Rashford, we don't have Martial. Um, we don't have Barnes. 
Greenwood isn't really a left winger, really. So really, the only United player that could play there um, is Dan James. Mm. Castagne sometimes played on the left wing this year as, on, as a left mid as well. He's done all right down that side. So, mm. or so is all Brighton as well. But it's just, it's not the best pickings, is it, for a le- like a left no, mid? It's not. If <laughs> Rashford was fit, he would go. He would go there as as, as well. Even Martial, Martial. But um, I mean, Kobe says Diallo. 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 Diallo is a right winger, and to be honest, he's not really played. I think he. I think I genuinely think that he's more talented than Dan James. So I think if he had a run of games and and um, he would be uh, play on on both sides, but just because of the fact that he's not played enough games, so it's very difficult to say you definitively go there. So and United don't really. I mean, the only thing I could say is that like you could, you could potentially put Tielemans where Pogba is and put Pogba on the left because that's where he has been playing for Manchester United. Mm. But one thing you could do as well is we saw it a couple of times this season when we've had injuries is Vardy's mm. played down sort of down that left-hand channel with mm. Ian Acho up front. So could potentially do that, but I don't know. <laughs> no, it's, it's not yeah. his natural position. It's, it's yeah. very much... Um, Wait, what's the expression? Uh, uh, square pegs in round holes. In round holes, exactly, exactly. I'm like, I'm like, is there anyone that's fit in the Manchester United? Because, because I could, because Pogba, Pogba has been playing on the left hmm. for quite a few games, and a sense, and certainly in the game against AC Milan, he was picked to play on the left wing as well. So I'd almost be more comfortable playing Pogba on the left. Because at least I know that he he can he will be he's he's played there quite a few games a season. He's consistently can do things from that side, and then bring in um, maybe a Tillemans in that midfield, and then put Vardy up top. Yeah, well, on form, I'd argue Ian Atro goes in this team over Vardy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a fair. Well, I know most is Vardy on the left and Cavani. I don't think Cavani's fit. That's the thing. Um, Otherwise, I probably would have done that. Vardy and then either Cavani in the outro, but I I don't think Cavani's fit. I'll just double-check that, but I'm fairly sure he's not fit. Um, Isn't Cavani, like, he's, like, 70% fit or something, but he doesn't want to play if he's not 100%? No, 100%, exactly, yeah. I so don't I blame him. Like, it's not what you want to hear from one of your sort of main players, but when he's out of contract in the summer, at the end mm. of the day, he's... He's looking after his health and his career because he's. Yeah, exactly. It's not as if he's a Manchester United man either, is it? So. Yeah, and and at the end of the day, he, he will want to try and get a move, and it's going to be difficult for him to get a move if he um, if he if if he's injured. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Mo says, "I think he is. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe he is. He is. It's just I wouldn't be surprised if he if he if he picked up something. So." Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, so what we're going to do here then? So, I guess the options are Vardy on the left and Iniacho up top, or Pog- Pogba on the left, Iniacho on top, and then you bring in Tillemans in for that to, for that midfield um, option, or I bring in another United player like maybe a McTominay. Oh well, not really. Um, don't don't um, compare my to Tillemans. <laughs> 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 Scott McTominay, you know, like a Scottish rubber man, you know. So, like, you know, he he's he's something to else. Fair, to be fair to him, he has come on a lot this year as a box to box midfielder. He has improved massively. Mm. So, credit where credit's due. But yeah. I, I so think what, you're the guest. So, how do you think we should sort this out? Vardy on the left or Pogba on the left? I'd go wait. It's neither of their natural positions. I'll go Vardy mm. on the left and then okay. Iheanacho up top. But you you can easily make a case for Pogba on the left because he did win you a game against Milan on the left, didn't he? Yeah, coming off he played off against Liverpool on the left. And if, to be honest, he was he's been playing on the left pretty much since the beginning of this year because Martial has been out of form. So when Martial, because essentially Solskjaer dropped dropped Martial. 
and and when Pogba's fit, he will play Pogba on the left. So he'd rather play Pogba, Rashford, and Greenwood than Martial. But then when Pogba got injured, Martial and came back into the team and and um, and with Cavani and what have you. But if Martial is injured, Pogba will come back in. So um, yeah, it's, um, Pogba, he's at least played there more than twice this year. Which is so, uh, okay, so we'll put Pogba. So does that mean that we're going to put put Tillemans at number seven? Yeah. The Belgian star man. And then um, it's even pronounced. It never have spelled that right. Any actual? Have I spelled that right. You've misspelled I... it. It's the Nigerian R nine. It's. <laughs> In fact, that's what I'm going to write. Uh, that's what going to be Nigerian R9. <laughs> I did that with Lato in my Milan preview, but that is what I'm going to do. Kobe says, love any actual. Had him in my FPL last week. Well, lucky for some, I forgot to put my FPL in and I had blanks with, um, I don't know, who had blanks with? Uh, Bamford or something. So that wasn't really helpful. Um, so this is our, our combined 11. Obviously, Casper in goal, then Shaw. Evans, Maguire, Wambasak, and Didi Tillemans, Pogba on the left, Fernandez, Perez, and the Nigerian R9 in the Acho. So that's one, uh, two, three, four, five, six to Leicester, and one, two, three, four, five to Manchester United. So that is interesting. That is definitely interesting going into the game um, at the weekend. And just around.